My name is Tim Rowe, and I work here at the University of Texas at Austin as a vertebrate paleontologist. Paleontology is the study of ancient life forms, and one of the questions that we're really interested in is how did modern life come to be? How have the climates changed over time? How have environments changed over time? And how do animals and plants respond to those changes in climate? Paleontologists study extinct life forms, and vertebrate paleontologists study those extinct life forms that had backbones, animals that had backbones and have a skeleton like ours. What I focus in on are, are a couple of things. One is the relationships among vertebrates. It's really important to know who's related to whom. For example, knowing that birds are the descendants of extinct dinosaurs and by mapping the genealogy of, of these organisms, we've been able to turn science on its head and say, dinosaurs, for example, aren't all extinct. I'm also very interested in the evolution of sensory systems. Vertebrate evolution involved the evolution of a big brain and the evolution of special sensory systems that are far more acute, far more sensitive than in other animals. So my research covers these two areas, mapping the tree of life, figuring out who's related to whom, and particularly how did the brain and the special sense organs evolve? Those are the questions I'm really interested in. In my capacity as a paleontologist here, I, I have a chance to work in several different labs at the university, which is very exciting because I do different things on a day-to-day -day basis. I work at the Vertebrate Paleontology Lab, which is a part of the Texas Memorial Museum, and that's where we store our fossils, where we prepare fossils, that's where our library and so forth is. And I also have a chance to work at the High Resolution Computed X-ray Tomography Facility, our CT facility, which is a very high-tech uh, facility that uses a CAT scanner, industrial CAT scanner, to non-destructively look inside of fossils. And I also go into the field on a regular basis. I look for bones uh, all across Texas and the American Southwest. And I've had a chance to collect in South Africa and in Germany and in Mexico and other parts of the world. Well, when we find a dinosaur bone, the first thing we try to do, just like with a crime scene, is document the site. Then once the specimen has been jacketed, we take it back to the vertebrate paleontology lab at the Texas Memorial Museum take the plaster away from the bone, take the rock from away from the bone, and clean the bone up so that you can see all of its surfaces. Sometimes if it's a beautiful skull or a complete skeleton, and we want to look at its internal information, like what its brain was like, or what its nose was like, or what its sense of vision was like, or its ears, or balance, or hearing, we don't like to break the specimens open, so then we bring them here to the CT lab, where we'll put them inside our CT scanner and scan them. The high-resolution X-ray computed tomography facility uses X-rays like a medical CAT scanner but to look at objects of natural history. Data that we generate then go into a, a, our computer labs to uh, make three-dimensional imagery, to reconstruct the images, to look for particular features, to measure features of the uh, imagery. And this is the first such facility that was ever built and designed and we're still the most productive. And, Many, many uh, scientists from museums all over the world have come here to use this to scan their uh, uh, fossils with. So it's a job that gives me a chance to go into the field, to collect things, to go all over the world, to work in a conventional museum setting, which is very gratifying, and, and to work in a high-tech lab, which we've developed here that I had no idea I'd be involved with five or 10 years ago. So by studying the history of life, we can begin to project ahead and make good predictions on what's ahead for us all so that we can make good decisions on using resources and how to take care of the species that we have alive on the planet today.